Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. We have got Table Topper Finale, ta-da! And uh, Pillow Talk, so we've got a great big Pillow Talk here. And then I have a little discovery. Plus, it was Ice Cream Sunday day the other day. How did I miss that? Oh, okay, so first, the first let's do the Table Topper. Okay, I put on the light blue border and it looks fabulous. It gives, it's a very light springy. I think this is a spring quilt now. This is definitely a spring quilt. I f I'm just so excited that the bird, with using the bird song for this so long and using the solids in there, everything was just so fun to do. And then I believe I showed you the backing the other day. So I have the backing with, um, and I've got the binding already made and the backing is the two fabrics because I didn't have enough of the one here. I mean, I can get more. I can write to Benner Text and they'll send me more, but you know, I'm sewing it now and I wanna use up what I have. And I thought it would be a way to show you how you can do that. So two different fabrics. There we go, the center, and then on each, either side is the other fabric. This is a kind of companion fabric, so it all goes together. So that, that is all done. Okay, the red zinger. The red zinger, let me show you this before we talk, do the pillow talk, because it is magical. <laughs> I was sitting there looking at it and thinking about the miter corners and looking at it, and all of a sudden I went like, oh, because I'm not, because I'm using pieced fabric, uh, I don't have to worry about seams and things. So I can turn this square into a mitered corner. <laughs> it's, it's magic. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see how this square will work. First thing I have to do is fold it. So I want to have it folded for the audition and it'll be going this way, just like the, uh, the side fabrics are. And I will come all the way up and I will basically be doing a sew and flip corner. And let me put a pin there and step back and pretty much I'll have a mitered quarter. So I will do that. I'll just unsew to about here on that top row and the same on the other side and then do a sew and flip corners. And then when I get down to the bottom one here, I will do the sew and flip corners before I put it on. So I'll measure and then before I put it on and then voila, mitered corners. It's magical. So the other day it was ice cream Sunday day. Was it yesterday? I think it was, I think it was yesterday. And in my holiday hoopla, I celebrate the ice cream day. Which page is it on? Okay, here it is. Ice cream day with this quilt. Ah, oh, see, look at that. Look at the ice cream. Ah, oh, yeah. Super cute. It's a table runner. So let's see it in person. And I quilted this one, so I'll show you the quilting on it. So here it is, my summer blue with a sort of very light tangerine color, you know. Now that we've done the Secret Lives of Color, I want to name everything, like really nice names, like, you know, the Crayola box names or uh, nail polish names. <laughs> you ever look at nail polish names or paint, paint chip names? Yeah. So I did, I did circles in the background, little bubbles, little bubbles in the background, and then just a little um, weave like a little doo 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 wave like in the stripe and then there's just loops in the border. Uh, oh, what, what's in the stripes here? Oh, I think I did, I did like a flower. So there's like a flower in the middle of these. So this, this one is great for any fabric combination. So if you wanna do a quick Christmas table runner, do you see how it's alternating where I have the white as the background on the, on the two on the end and the middle one, the white is in the center. And so it's the same fabrics. It just gives this really cool alternating feel. Okay, and the other ice cream one that I have from quite a while back, a couple years ago, was the little um, projects I did for the Fat Quarter Shop for their button club. And so this was a summer button club collection and it's a cute little star and a, um, a snow cone. I mean, a, an ice cream cone, yeah. What well, could be a snow cone, but it's, I, <laughs> it's an ice cream cone with some ice cream in it. And so that would be another cute thing if you have somebody that you want to do an ice cream cone for to celebrate. <laughs> to celebrate, you always have to celebrate something, right? Now it's time for a little pillow talk. We're going to make a pillow together on the other side of the table. 
My pillow talk is to make this into a pillow. It's the cross stitch that I finished. Yay, it was for the Christmas time quilt along, and this is the cross stitch along, and I did the extra snowflake in the card, and I did just a little swirl in the coffee cup. And I don't think I ever posted a picture, so after it's made into a pillow, I will do that, and I'll also put it on my gallery. So I had a suggestion a while back from one of our, I think it was from Kathy P during the chat in the morning that uh, I should use a piece of this fusible interfacing behind it to cover up and support the stitches, particularly since I'm putting it in a pillow and I'm gonna be pulling it in and out. And it's an excellent, excellent idea. And I did that on the last one. Uh, I think the Boo Crew, so I will do it on this one. And uh, what I wanna tell you is a, just a little tip. Because just like in your quilting, you don't wanna have any shadowing of threads and things that could be seen. So take a look at your piece before you go over and press this. You're gonna put the nubby side down then you will cover it with a piece of fabric, any kind of fabric, just something, you know, it's something cotton like this, and then you'll steam it, steam, 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 uh, which I'll go and do. But check first that you didn't leave like some kind of random thread on here that's darker, that will be seen through on the front, because otherwise you just have to pull this up and uh, try fusing it down again. So I checked everything. There's a little fuzzy there. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and press this. It's nice and smooth now, it's pressed, it's flat. Here is the fusible interfacing on the back. So that is, this covers everything ever so nicely and it's not gonna get a lot of rough handling. So that is going to be great. Uh, I want, I got a bigger pillow form and this one measures, I got a little, so my Benertex measuring tape, look at that. So I got, I'm going to, going to measure it here. This is about a 16 inch pillow. And since I don't like the pillows to be sort of, I don't like the, the images to kind of d get distorted if the pillow's too tight. So I gen generally try to make them just a teeny bit looser. So this, look is, this is gonna get trimmed, but uh, I'm just kind of looking at it now. It's like, yeah, there's enough room around it. That other pillow was a little too small so that the, the image was getting wrapped too much. I wanted to sort of sit in the middle and then have the border fabrics wrap and not this. So I have a decision to make. Do I want to, there's not a lot of room. I've, I'm going to have, if I do like a one inch strip of this, and then this will be like a, to figure it out, just around a three inch uh, strip around like that. So that would be kind of what it is. I do like having that red in there. I think that looks good. I don't think there's gonna be a, very much of this. There won't be enough of this, let me put it that way. There won't be enough of this to do the two back flaps because uh, I'm doing it envelope style. So I did grab uh, some other ones to work with this to make the back flaps because this is the back of the pillow and I don't really care. I'm not going to see it. <laughs> So that's my philosophy. So I am going to do about a nine inch uh, square. So that's what I'm going to have is a nine inch square. So I already figured out the middle. I kind of did one of these numbers where I put edge to edge of the stitching like this and thought, oh, and I made a crease like out here. So I made a crease and opened it up and then I went this way, whoops, then I went this way and did, you know, what is edge to edge of that stitching and then it made a crease over here and marked it. And then from there, I want uh, about a nine inch, about a nine inch around. So that means four and a half at this pin and four and a half at that pin and that will give me the nine inch. So I will sort of double check with my other ruler to be sure. I might have to just scooch it along because these pins are not like totally centered. But here's like the bottom image and that's like one and a quarter. And then to nine inches up here, the it's one inch. There's one inch and this one is one and a quarter. So I could just scoot it a little bit down and then over here I have got one and a quarter and then from this inch it's just a little bit less than one inch. 
So I want to scoot it a little bit that way. That makes it a little bit more even. Okay, so I am good. I am now going to cut and take that pin out and cut. And then when I rotate this, I will be working with the nine inch markings on the ruler. So nine and nine. And once again, checking this is just under or about one inch. Same over here, one inch. This top is like one and a quarter. And down here is like one and a quarter. So that all still looks good. And then for those of you, there's a pin, get out of the way, who like to save your cloth, pieces of cloth. This is a this is a pretty good size piece, right? Because you could do something small that is like six inches at this point. So maybe a little four inch something could go in there. These two to me are not ones I will save, but I'll go ahead and save this one. So that goes over there to be dealt with later. All right, so when I did my calculations, I did the math, I did some math, and uh, I work with the finish size. This is finish size, eight and a half is this center because I cut it nine. And when you take the quarter inch seam allowance all around, you're taking away a quarter inch from nine is eight and three fourths. Take away the other quarter inch seam allowance is eight and a half. So you always deal, when you're doing the math, you always deal with the finish size and then you add the seam allowances afterwards. So I'm going to do a one and a half uh, inch, I'm going to cut a one and a half inch inner border from this red and then I am going to cut like a three and a half from here, which is a little bit more. I might even cut three and three fourths just so that I have enough. I can always trim it down, but it, I don't, I don't want to have to add. So it's better to go a little bit oversized for me. So let me go ahead and cut these two and sew them around this and then we'll lay it and then we'll lay that on top of the pillow form. Whoops, I can't turn that off with my rotary cutter, can I? Off, off. <laughs> Here it is with the inner border and the outer border, and it's about 17 inches now. Let's take a look at it on the pillow form and then the concept of what I'm going to do for the back. Two flaps of the pillow. So here it is, and it wraps around. And you can see this is a pretty good size image so that I could have even gone with a bigger pillow if I wanted it to really, really float and have made this you know, even bigger. But I'm happy with this. This is gonna work out fine. So now I need to do the two back panels and I don't have enough of this. You know, Normally that would be great. But I have found over time, and I have done it both ways, that I'm happier if I match along the edge this border to the backing. So that pretty much means I'm going to make two panels in the back that have a border on them. But I only need the border on three sides. So let's take a look. So I will have a center for both of the panels. And the panel will be, let's put this down here. So the panel will be about three-fourths of the way across. You know, about, about that, about that far. That way on the back, it's not pulling open. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I need to have it more than half. Half it will pull open and it won't be nice. So you need at least three fourths. So what I'm going to do is put this in the middle and then I will put a top border and a bottom border. And well, I'll just do this so you can see the whole image because these aren't cut long enough yet. They're just the scraps, you know. Uh, so there we go. I will measure it out. I have to figure out the calculations of what size I need of these three from what I have left and then the border, the inner, the inside to match it. But along here, this is the seam that'll, that'll meet in the back, which let me show you on another pillow. I brought a pillow over. So on here, that's this flap. So I will have border out here. It will look like this. You know, I will have the border I will have this here, I will have this here rather. Um, and then the edge, this flap edge, I don't need to put this green because it's going to be here in the middle and I'm not going to see it. So that is what I need to do now is just do three sides around here. If you can hear the fire truck that just went by, I am just one block from a fire station. So. Yes, fire trucks go by behind my window quite often. There we go. So I'm going to just do the calculation for these two and then I will show you how I layer it. Here are the two backing parts. The center, I 
put a top and a bottom and the sides. And now this flap will go over like so. And then the pillow form can go in here. Now when I put these together, what I want to do is take the top and put it right sides together with the backing as if it were one piece of fabric and line it up the edges you know make sure you know this is all nice gonna pull this in you know, just make sure everything is fitting all the way out to the edge so that one has to be pulled over just a little bit get it all nicely tucked up and then I will pin here. then I will pin all the way around and I will so see I have to either that's like there so I pin all the way around and then I will sew all the way around. So the opening, so we'll turn it inside out through this opening then that, we've, that we have here from the flap. So I will go ahead and pin it and show you how to turn it inside out. So here it is sewn all the way around and I did do some, let me see if I can see, yeah. I did some reinforcing stitches. I've just learned over time that you pull really hard on that seam uh, there when you're trying to get the pillow in. So I did it on both reinforcements here so that I just have a little bit of extra strength and I also clip the corners. Now I will take the opening and turn it right side out. Magic, it's magic. I find these so easy. If you have any of my books that have a pillow in it, it has uh, instructions for this. And if you have um, something that you're wanting to make into a pillow, today is the day, do it. Make it into the pillow. So I will then take my uh, pokey turny tool and just take in all the corners. Uh, so the pink flamingo to the rescue. <laughs> I love this pink flamingo so much so much okay so i've done three four corners and then i would go i'll go and press it but here is the front and whoops it'd be nice if it's right side up huh here is the front right side up <laughs> and the back so now you can see what i mean by having the um center part is that extra that I needed because I didn't have enough of this to do the whole thing but the green is around the whole edge so when I put it in the pillow here you will see that uh, it is not going to to pull the back fabric forward so that you see a different fabric and that's what I, that's what happens because you're always going to see your back fabric a little bit around the edge of your pillow so I want it to be the same fabric as the front. I just think it looks tidier that way. All right, so there's the pillows in here. And because I do this a little bit oversized, slightly oversized, I like having uh, that, that feeling of it so it doesn't feel stretched too much. There we go. There we go. Pull it out. Look. See? Now I will take it out again and I will just make a crisp edge on all the way around so that that seam is, is pressed down nice and crisp and I'll, f I'll press the whole front again just because I was reaching around with it. But you can see how big that is. Even with a 16 inch pillow, uh, you're still seeing a lot of the cross stitch. And so I think it turned out great. It's so cute. Okay, and while I was sewing this, I also was doing sweater weather blocks and I got five. One, two, uh, three, four, five sewn, just making this pillow because every time I would stop at a seam, I would just run through one of these corners and then you know, I would rotate, you know, pull, pull this off and then sew like the, the next inner border, sew a corner so that I would continuously sewing and I got these done. So I thought that was pretty darn good. And then while we're here on the conversation of pillows, today, if you wanna share a photo of a pillow, well, if you have a cross-stitch pillow, that would be awesome. But if you don't have a cross-stitch pillow, uh, share a pillow that you made to go with a quilt. So this is a suggestion from our ambassador, Melissa, uh, to I ask them, what should we share today? Because we've already shared sort of fall things and stuff like that. Um, so this quilt, I took some of the extra, extra fabric and made a pillow to go along with it. Uh, so if you have done the same, share that today. 
Okay, don't forget that all of my books, including Holiday Hoopla, are on sale at the Flat Quarter Shop this month, so you can pick up whatever book of mine you don't have yet of the current the current ones that they carry. Get those, get those, and show me your pillow. Show me a matching one to a quilt, or like me, if you did a cross stitch one, show one with cross stitch today. This was fun. This was really, really fun. Now, I do have that other one to do a little bit more on it than I was realizing because I forgot I have that little outer border to do on it. And so it may be a pillow. It may end up being a wall hanging. I'm not sure, like a little wall hanging. All right, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. Oh, oh, and share your uh, table topper quilts. Ah, I forgot to say that. Share your table topper quilts. Okay, I love you. Mwah. See you online.